I'm Scarlett Douglas and these are my five top tips to level up and become a TV presenter. Find your USP, that's your unique selling point. It's basically what makes you stand out from anybody else, what makes you unique, special and rare. So something that you're extremely knowledgeable about, highly passionate about, or something that you have an expertise in. So my USP is I'm a property developer. I've been doing it for about two, three years before I got the job that I did in presenting. And the only reason I got my presenting job is because I had that expertise. The presenting job that I got was a property-based show, which meant that my knowledge in property helped me get it. I remember having a meeting with a top agent and they gave me two bits of advice. I could either go on a reality TV show and become famous that way, or I could use my expertise to help me get into presenting. I rather the expertise route because I figured that that would give me more longevity as opposed to something that was maybe going to make me famous for a season and then the next season somebody else would come in and kind of take over and, and fill that space. So to find your USP, think about something that you are extremely passionate about or something that you know loads about, something that you could talk about every single day and never get bored on, something that you are highly knowledgeable in. For me, it was property. I was very lucky. I went to my initial agent and said, look, I have an expertise in property. Can I get into presenting that way? I always wanted to be an entertainment presenter because I love singing, dancing, acting, fashion, anything like that. But it was gonna be really difficult to get into that field of presenting because that's pretty much the field that everybody wants to do. So instead, I used my USP, I used my expertise, and I got into presenting that way, which then helped open doors to get into other routes of presenting. So find your USP, it is key. It is the one thing that will make you stand out from the rest and will make someone pick you over everybody else. Enter as many competitions as possible. You've got to be in it to win it. I will never forget the amount of competitions that I entered and I wanted to be a TV presenter no matter what. So anytime I saw one, I was clicking and I was entering. I remember I came from musical theatre and I was in a show at the time and I dragged the sound guy off the show to come around with me and help me film some clips and put a little something together to enter a competition. And everyone backstage was like, Scarlett, you're not going to be a TV presenter, just forget about it. And I was like, no, it's my calling, I know it's for me, so I'm going to keep entering until I win a competition. And I think I only won one out of all of them but that one is what helped me get into presenting. I won a competition to be the face of MTV for the day and that helped me get a presenting agent. Now you might not think that you'll do well but the more you're recording, the more content you're creating, the better you're getting at being in front of camera. So your poise in front of camera, your confidence in front of camera, being able to create content, come up with different ideas and concepts, whether you're at home interviewing your friends or your mum and dad, just try and get as much content as possible because that way you can also create a showreel and a showreel is basically a collection of clips put together to make one big reel so people can see how good you are on camera. So yes, competitions are without a doubt the best way of doing it. Also you can go on sites like Star Now and have a look for small presenting jobs because that will also help you with confidence in front of camera. Create your brand. Now, it's quite similar to a USP, your brand, but it's basically why people would come to you. You'll see that YouTubers, influencers, social media people, TV presenters are all a brand, and you can have a look pretty much through their Instagram, it's a great place to start, and you will see what their brand is. So my brand is, I love colour, I love sparkles, I love travelling, exploring, just pretty much anything that's feel good, positive, and makes people happy. So you will see that as you scroll through my Instagram. You need to definitely find your brand, because otherwise it gets a bit confusing as to who you are, what you like, and what you'd be booked for when it comes to TV presenting jobs. So for me, people know if they're coming to me, they're gonna get someone that knows about travelling, knows about colour and knows about sunshine, being happy. What is your brand? What makes you, again, stand out from everybody else and stick to it? It's quite hard to find one thing in particular, so it doesn't have to be one thing, but as long as you're confident at that one thing or confident at a few things and it all makes sense as one brand, then we're pretty much halfway there already. For example, if you love trainers, make sure your social media account shows that. So either you're talking about trainers a lot, you're posting pictures of trainers, you're interviewing people about trainers, then that way production companies know you are the person to come to when it comes to trainers. So that's what your brand would be. For me as well, I love 
anything to do with the 70s, 80s, that sort of style. So you'll see on some of my Place in the Sun episodes, which is a daytime Channel 4 show, and you probably wouldn't expect it, but I have huge afros, I've got dreads, I've got beads, I've got all these sort of things because I love that part of my brand. I love the fact that I like 70s, I love flares, I love sequins, um, I love black power and black is beautiful and I want to promote that and make sure that young black girls understand it's okay to have a big afro or their natural hair. They don't have to permit, they don't have to put in a weave. So you'll see that when you come to my page, when you see me on TV shows, you'll see that I really try and stick with that. So find out what your brand is and if you don't know what it is, create it. Again, what are you passionate about and what do you want to present? Produce your own content. Now, I'm sure you've heard this a lot, but it is key to getting on television. There are so many social media platforms that are free, such as YouTube, such as IGTV, such as TikTok, where you can really show your personality and you can put yourself out there and create content that you want to create and that you want to be a part of and that you want to present. So a YouTube channel is a great way to produce your own content. Having your own channel is fantastic because people are coming to you and they're seeing what you're passionate about and what you're like when you're on camera and what you want to talk about and then that way you can build a following, you can build subscribers, you can build viewers and that's really important for broadcasters and production companies to see what you're like and to see how good you are in front of camera. Now a lot of presenters as I've said have actually started off being online and then they've moved over to the mainstream. There are lots of different ways of doing it, but a lot of them have started from their social media accounts. We've looked at people like Mo Gilligan, Judy Love, Munya Chihuahua, even ZZ Mill Show. They've all started online and they have consistently kept going and pushing and they've built their own content and their own audience, which then helps move the audience that are seeing them online to an audience watching them on television. Now, producing your own content isn't really as hard as you may think it is. You don't need the big cameras, you don't need loads of lights, you don't need professional or specific microphones at all. You just need to have a good smartphone and be confident in front of camera. Get a ring light that you can order online, they're not that expensive. Sit up, set up with something behind you that's clear, not too busy you know, to take away and distract, but just you to camera and presenting whatever it is that you want to present. Whether it is you interviewing someone else, whether it is you talking to camera by yourself, just get used to being in front of camera, get used to coming up with ideas, different concepts, something again that's gonna make you stand out from everybody else. Get used to creating content, coming up with ideas, different concepts, things that you can record from either the comfort of your own home or out and about, but something that can build up your channel and build up your viewings. Now, it's not going to happen overnight. You do have to work on it. It takes time. It's the same as getting followers on Instagram. You're not all of a sudden going to have loads and loads of followers, but if you do remain consistent, people will then keep following you and they know that every week, for example, you'll be putting out a show so they know what time to come and they know exactly what they're going to get from you. So definitely, definitely focus on creating your own content. Don't start straight away willy-nilly, really build up a plan, come up with an idea of how often you want to shoot something, how often you're going to put content out and just keep working on that, keep building. The more you do it, the more content you'll have, the more viewers you'll have and the more likely a TV production company will see you and want you to front one of their shows. Practice makes perfect. Practice, practice, practice like a professional so that when you get that call, you are ready to go. Here are a few little tips. The first one would be go online and check out teleprompter, which is basically an auto cue. So if you are presenting live, which is when it happens mostly, you will have script that's going up and down a screen and you're reading and the camera lens is pretty much behind that screen. It's pretty tricky, but the more you do it, the more you'll get the hang of it. You can set your own speed, you can change the colours, whether you want white writing on a black background or vice versa, and it's just a way of practising. So the, the words will go up and the lines will go up and you just have to keep reading, keep reading. So you can find lots of free teleprompter websites online. I'm telling you now, that practice is priceless. I've done it before, I've been in a situation when I've had to read an auto cue, and it's not the easiest thing when you first start, but you really can get better at it, so do practise that. Another little tip is if you are doing live presenting at some point, talk back is something that you'll have to experience, which is when you have an earpiece in and you'll be interviewing someone and a director will be giving you direction in your ear. So either they're telling you you have to wrap up in exactly 10 seconds, they start counting you down, or they might be telling you that we're going to go to a different cooler or something's gone wrong, so can you just talk for a little bit longer and fill some time? You have to be able to listen to your director, but also stay in the zone with the person that you're interviewing or whatever situation it is that you're in. So my tip for this would be get an ear pod, 
headphone, anything, stick it in your ear, call your mum, dad, friend, whoever it is that's potentially next door or in the next room, and then interview someone while that person in your ear is giving you direction. So it will just help you focus on having two things going on at once, someone telling you what to do, whilst also interviewing somebody else. Again, it's really not easy, but the more you do it, I promise you, the better you'll get at it. I remember the first time I ever did talk back was for a screen test for the National Lottery, and in the car on the way there, I had my earpod in, I was talking to my mum, but my boyfriend was giving me direction in my ear, and it really, really helped. So by the time I got to my screen test, I was pretty much good, I was ready to go. I wasn't out of my depth, and I had an idea of what it would be like. And I remember at the end, everyone saying, oh, that's really good, Scott, I didn't know you'd done talkback before. It's not on your CV. And I was like, well, I haven't done talkback before, but I really appreciate it. So the more you can find these little tips, the better for you, because it will really help when you are in a position where you're gonna to have to do something for the first time. And my last little one as well would be, come up with lots of different show ideas, concepts, things that you could see yourself presenting, write them down, format them, find the right sort of production company that would maybe produce a show like that, and then take your idea to them, pitch it, tell them that you'd be great at presenting it, why you'd be great at presenting it, show them how passionate you are about something. The more you've got written down, the more you can show people that it's something you really want to do, you're ambitious, you're driven, the more likely it will be that you'll get a job on TV. Thank you.